Simon here. So, episode I think six, we've done episode seven now. I'm losing track of numbers, but Casey, he's put this money, Lex paid him 2,000 American dollars in his top pocket. He said, I want to think about this and go back to Bangkok. Lex, before he leaves, uh, nods at Jib and Jib says to Casey if you would consider doing a few more trips for us to Singapore we will give you two and a half thousand dollars each trip let's say once a month have a think about it and point him to the door where he gets the Mercedes takes him back to Bangkok and he has a few days drinking in Bangkok going around Bangkok thinking about all this uh, he's not sure he's just broken the law but he doesn't want to go doing the musician thing around the world this would be a way of him if he did say four trips that's ten thousand dollars he could stay in Thailand for much longer <coughs> how's this happening this business what's, what's what's the money what's the breakdown of this the girls in Singapore are going to Lex businesses apartments and Apparently, their customers are high-end, different nationalities, Chinese, Russian, Singapore, all over the place. And the girls can potentially earn $2,000 a day. They're there for three months. On their return, it seems that Jib will be given ten thousand dollars for two girls five thousand each girl the girls pay Lek x amount Lek gives Jib ten thousand that ten thousand she has to pay the person KC in this case two and a half thousand the elders two and a half thousand and Jib gets five thousand US dollars once a month 5,000 US dollars <coughs> you know Jib she's greedy will she be happy with that but she's just starting out in this new venture totally illegal she's moved up a class she started remember back Chiang Mai in the bar as a girl she's been married twice now she's had a daughter she's left dumped on Peter in the UK she stole all that money from John, John's mother, legged it to Thailand. She's still in bed with the tribe. She's finished her apprenticeship. This is her master's degree. The tribe are constantly in contact with Jib. The moment she's got this condo in, she's renting in Bangkok. She has her driver, Junta. Um, he's also a bit of a bodyguard now, and he's the gopher. He's moved into her apartment. Lek, the big mastermind, almost like the Godfather Mafia, her and this gentleman. Mm. So, Jib uh, returns back to Bangkok and drops her guard a little bit on an evening out, gets a little bit drunk, ends up sleeping with Junta that's not good and over the coming weeks they're sleeping together more and more she's up to salary now to 50,000 baht a month he's passed all the tests she's sort of paying a man now for sex with her the tables have turned Junta's got everything he's got the company car free at home he's got the boss paying him money and he's having sex with her as well and all he's doing is running some gold around and post office and a few girls here and there taking them to the airports and things 
What a job. Ha, oh, he's laughing. Casey, back in Patea. And he goes back to his go-go bars. He's the Mamerson. They've got quite friendly now over time. And he pulls her to one side on this evening, talks to her, says to her, you know what I did and where I've been with Moy and the other girl. Mam said, yeah, yeah. He said, they want me to do this now more times. You know me a long time and you've seen maybe you know more than me. You know, is this good for me to do a few times? And the Mama San, of course, she's going to say, yeah, she's on the books for Lek somewhere along the line there. She said, yeah, you do it a few times, it's okay. What happened? You maybe, if, if they stop you, any immigration customs, they just slap you on the wrist and tell you not to do it again. You'll be fine. Casey, as is usual, JD and Bar finds some more girls and goes off in each of them and he's having a good time in Patea. And he thinks, why not? I don't want to go back session playing. I'm going to do it. He gets on the phone. He's got Jib's number. He rings Jib. She must have given him the number when they were at the big house last time. He rings Jib. Says to Jib, okay, we'll do it for a few more times. Okay. Jib's like, very good. I know I can trust you. Um, we're lining up for another three weeks time. Enjoy your money, enjoy yourself, have fun. Casey sort of, okay, let's, let's do it. And he gets it in his head, he's gonna do it. And he's just, for the next few weeks, he's having a bit of fun. Go, go, bar girls. Jib and Junta, an item sort of now. Hmm, not good really. Back in the UK, the lawyer, who's got a chip on his shoulder, had a problem with Thai people in the past, with a Thai person, he's trying to help John, see if he can get that money back that Jib stole. He's got as much information as he can from the bank, John's mother's bank, the account's closed, he can't track down which computers were used if more than one computer was used. All he can track down is the time that Jib sent the money from the mother's account to Thailand. And those times that she sent them, was it two or three times? Every time John was at home, it was in the mornings and he'd finished his job. This doesn't look good for John because he could have done it himself. The lawyer thinks, I've got to, there must be some other way. And the job Jib did, the cafe, the lawyer thinks, I'm going to look into this more. And what's he do? On one evening, he goes to the cafe. It's a restaurant in the evening. He goes in, just a normal customer, sits down, doesn't mind Thai food, and has a meal. And while he's there, he starts noticing things it's just not quite right for a restaurant there's a few Thai girls about he notices a guy come in uh, English guy goes to one of the girls and then they go out the back of the restaurant towards the end of his meal maybe 45 minutes later guy and girl come back through the back of the restaurant guy smiling and exits quite quickly and the girl goes with the other girls and lots of giggling and chatting. He thinks that's strange. It doesn't look right, these girls sat around. He's got his suspicion, something is going on here. He can't work it out. He can't see that there's apartments upstairs, he's no idea. He doesn't really know about the wholesale shop next door, all part of the same organization. But he's, he's something's not right. Anyway, pays his bill, leaves. He decides that this is definitely needs more investigation. He really has got a ship on his shoulder. He wants to help John, even if it costs him money maybe. As a lawyer, he's got some contacts and he sets about two of his guys to put surveillance on the cafe. 
and the shop next door. Um, just casual surveillance for now to see if he can gather any information. Let's John know what he's doing and gives John updates. John's not first anyway, as I said, he's got a new PlayStation now or he's got a new Xbox and all that money in the bank. He doesn't care. He thinks Psh, everything's fine, he's not bothered. But if anything comes back, that'll be an even bigger bonus for him. The lawyer also is talking to the bank again and he now knows that the money Jib sent went to the Bangkok Bank via London branch into Thailand. And he's on the phone to the Bangkok Bank trying to get them to send the money back. And they're not interested at all. <coughs> and he's like trying to even freeze the account. But again, he's going to need some sort of court order or proof. Dead end there at the moment, dead end. Really frustrating. So much happening. The way Jib's gone from that bar girl, marriage, free house, Peter, daughter, John, into Thailand now. She did all the Europe stuff, she did all the gold, she's still doing the gold. So she's making money, but not a huge amounts. $5,000 a month for two girls. Jib is now trying to work out. She's only been given the basics. This is the one trip that's gone. She's now starting to think, where can I get more guys? There's plenty of girls lined up ready from Lek to move across to Singapore. Many as they can get across, no problem. So Jib now has to find guys that she's going to be able to teach and push with girls through the borders and she's even starting to look at other ways of getting people across by maybe going off to Cambodia and then flying from there maybe going overland she's starting to look and inquire what ways is there more ways where is she gonna find these guys Leck pointed out that it was better it was sort of Americans something to do with the visa Singapore visas wealthy foreigners Jib's thinking it could be any nationality, foreigner, as long as they've got money, or they look like they've got money. She can make all that happen. She just needs to find these guys that want to stay in Thailand, prepared to go over the line to become illegal, trafficking. Mm. She has an idea that a lot of foreign teachers in Bangkok don't earn a lot of money could she use them possibly she has that idea she could possibly go up suck a bit further out a lot of the teachers eat and drink up there away from the main areas or does she need to go into the main areas like Pat Pong, Nana, Cowboy is there foreigners there that are on their last pennies that want to go or should she go to the airport she's trying to work She's got to find these type of guys. She's already put the word out to the girls around some of the areas to look for these type of guys. She decides she's going to go out with Junta, do some canvassing, talk to more girls, give her number, see if she can find some more guys. If she could push more girls through, the money goes up and up and up. $5,000 for two girls, every two girls. Just imagine she could earn loads if she could put through the traffic. Hmm. Three weeks pass, it's time, Casey again. Two girls are lined up. Casey meets, comes up to Bangkok, meets the girls, has a night with the girls, out and about, getting to know them, getting a little bit of background. He's got to pretend he's known them for six months, so two girls day out evening out then they come back he's in a hotel they give him a night of free aerobics that's the best way to get to know somebody surely and the next morning junta arrives picks them all up they're off to singapore same story 
Jib's given cash, uh, 100, 150,000 baht to KC via Junta. Cash in the pocket. He's dressed smart. The girls are dressed smart. Weekend bags, same before. And it's been, it's only a month since he's been. Off he goes, flies into Singapore. Again, he gets questioned a little bit, but not too bad. He already knows the score. He's not cheeky. Gets through, no problem. Two girls hotel he knows the score now they're going to wander off from the hotel and he's going to have two days he knows now he can enjoy himself in singapore everything's paid for oh it's moving on so quick this story i'm gonna to have to leave it there two more episodes left for season two what is going to happen oh it's hotting up Remember the UK. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.